Now let's take a walk through history and take a look at some of the coats of arms of the families that either had the last name of Vance or through either legend or fact were the origins of the Vances. I'll be focusing here more on the coats of arms than on who these families were, but there's a lot more detail about these families in the VFA newsletters and other resources that I'll show at the end of the video. About the same time that early heraldry first started, a noble knight in the town of Vance, in what is now southern Belgium, took the last name De Vance after the town itself. According to local researchers, around 1100 or the early 1200s, this Vance line first used a gold shield with four red stripes as their coat of arms. But some later records say that their coat of arms changed completely to a black shield with seven fleur-de-lis. About the same time as this black shield took hold, several other families with different last names in the area adopted a coat of arms with fleur-de-lis as well. Now the fleur-de-lis at the time was a symbol granted by the King of France, so a few researchers have suggested that these knights went on crusade with or for the French King and were granted the right to use the fleur-de-lis on their coat of arms as a result. The Irish Vances, of course, know about the de Beau family of southern France, who are the legendary founders of the de Vaux family in Normandy. And the de Beau had a red shield with the Star of Bethlehem on it, as a claim of their ancestry back to Balthazar, one of the Magi kings. It's a nice story which they did keep up for centuries, but no one has any real evidence for it either way. Whatever their origins, within a few generations after the Devoe Knights came to England with William the Conqueror in 1066, their descendants had adopted a checkered pattern as their coat of arms, although they seem to have had two main variations, one gold and red check, which seems to have been primarily used by the northern family branch up in Cumberland and Gilsland, up by the Scottish border, and silver and red check, which was mostly used in the eastern counties of England. This is apparent in the earliest rolls of arms, like the Daring Roll, here made about 1270-1280. It was also obvious that this was adopted early on, because different Tavaux branches soon settled in northern and eastern England, and they all used some form of this checkered pattern. Meanwhile, one Tavaux branch also made it up to Scotland, where they built a castle in Deerleton near Edinburgh. This family line adopted a silver shield with a red stripe, which is called a bend in blazon. Many of you know this Scottish family branch, of course, and we'll come back to it in a minute. In these middle years of heraldry, the rules were just starting to get settled and enforced. It was not until the later part of this period that colleges of arms were formed, the English DeVoe families were branching out at this time into junior family lines, who all mostly took on new coats of arms that proclaimed their connection with the original checkered pattern that the DeVoe had used, but varied it in different ways. There are many examples of these coats of arms, like the DeVoe of Harrowden, the DeVoe of Corby, Catterlin, and Trieremain, and others. Up in Scotland, the DeVoe of Durleton had their own last name evolve into Vans, and junior lines on their own branched off, particularly in Menny, where the Vance line had this variation, and in Barnborough, where, whose coat of arms is very familiar to the Irish Vances. This, of course, is the family line of Jamie Vance, today's 23rd Laird of Barnborough. This is the later period of heraldry, where the rules got stricter and the coats of arms got more complex. It's also the period where coats of arms were expanded outside of the true older nobility to be offered to other people, and for the first time, non-nobles and wealthy uh, businessmen and citizens got to also pick coats of arms for themselves. Now, there are advances today, especially in the U.S., whose last names come from other families, like the Wentz families of Pomerania and Bavaria. And sometime in this period, these families on the continent adopted coats of arms as well. One branch is from Basel in Switzerland, whose coat of arms was described by a researcher named Abdul Ross Wentz in 1961. He says this family were outstanding citizens of Basel, and that there are still old tombs in the city cemeteries that bear these arms. This is said to be the family of several lines of Wences who emigrated to the U.S., including Peter Wentz, who arrived in 1903. 
Another Wenzlein came to the U.S. from Niederlandstein in Bavaria. The noble family in Bavaria carried this coat of arms. It shows up in German heraldry books, at least by 1825, but we don't know anything about which family carried it or when it started. In the 20th century, other Vance researchers whose name came from Wentz have documented this coat of arms as their line. There are two families who carried these arms that are documented in some of the old books on coats of arms that obviously descend from the same original family. One is from Prussia, in what is now northern Germany, who carried these arms with silver stars, and one is from Austria, who carried these arms with gold stars. That seems to be the only variation between the two coats of arms. I don't know how these families are connected to today's Vances, but since you sometimes see these coats of arms connected with Vances, whose last name came from Wentz, I thought I'd mention it. Switching back to the British Isles, there are also several Vance coats of arms that came from families who lived in Ireland. This is, of course, the time when several people named Vans, V-A-N-S, moved to Ireland where the name in Ireland first started to be written V-A-N-C-E. One of the best known is the Reverend John Vance of Kilmacrennan, who moved from Scotland to Ireland in 1617 and died there in 1662. In William Balberny's book, he describes that the Reverend John Vance's will was sealed with red wax with a coat of arms which he says was argent or silver on a bend gules or red, three mullets or stars. That looks like this as a coat of arms. And Balberny took that as evidence that the Reverend John Vance was a branch off the Barnborough line. And that's certainly possible. But with the three stars, that coat of arms actually looks closer to the Vance of many coat of arms that we saw before not Barnborough, which had only one star. And of course the colors in red wax would not have been obvious. Of course now the Reverend John Vance's will burned up in the Dublin Four Courts fire in 1922, so we can't check it. But there is another surviving record of that will, from the Ulster King of Arms, Sir William Betham, in 1810. He made up an index of the wills on file, which has survived, and his index agrees with Balberny, with one important difference. He included a picture of the seal with little flowers called sinkfoils, which are also on the many arms. Now, of course, both the Barnborough and the many families came from the original family, to the Vaux of Dirlington. So whether the Reverend John Vance came from one or the other isn't really a big change from our standard origin for this line of Irish Vances. In both cases, they started with the De Vaux of Dirlington and maybe eventually from the De Vaux uh, of England, and so on. But the traditional story that started with William Balberny is that the Reverend John Vance came from the Barnborough line. And the documentation from Sir William Betham showing sink foils suggests maybe the heraldry suggests a different option from where the Reverend John Vance originally came from. A few other coats of arms were adopted by Vances in Ireland later in the 1800s. In 1816, a man named Patrick Kennedy published a book of coats of arms with sketches taken from the office of the Ulster King of Arms in Ireland, which included two coats of arms for different Vance lines. One is clearly taken from the seal of the Reverend John Vance, and probably from Betham's drawings, although we don't know that for sure. The fact that he put one star and labeled it 2-3 like the drawings in Betham's files makes it very suggestive. The other one is a more mysterious one. It's only labeled Vance of Bridge Street. In the October 1988 newsletter, Kathleen Mason discusses this coat of arms and concludes that it was a branch of the family of John Vance, who was Member of Parliament from Ireland in the 1850s and 1860s. Now there is another coat of arms attributed to John Vance himself, which is this unusual red and gold triangle pattern. So we don't really know who specifically in that family carried this quartered coat of arms. Patrick Kennedy made a drawing of it, but more recent research at the Ulster Office of the King of Arms hasn't shown any records of it. The only other place this coat of arms has been found is in a book plate of a Vance coat of arms that was sent to some U.S. researchers about 50 years ago by Barnborough Johnny, who was the Scottish Laird of Barnborough at the time. It's not clear whether he thought this was a related line to his Scottish Vance family, or if it was just a coat of arms that someone else had sent to him. 
And finally, there are two other coats of arms related to William Balberny and the line of Vance's that his mother, Margaret Vance, was from. One of Margaret's ancestors was James Vance, who was Lord Mayor of Dublin in 1805. This was another Vance family who was probably important enough to carry a coat of arms, but we don't know if James Vance himself ever carried one. But the Ulster King of Arms office does have a record of a coat of arms for James's niece, Alicia Vance, who was also William Balberny's aunt. Alicia apparently carried this very different coat of arms, which has not yet been found anywhere outside the Irish records. The very last coat of arms I'll talk about goes back to William Balberny and his immediate family. William tells us the whole reason he wrote his book was because his older brother, Robert Anstruther Balberny, asked him to research the genealogy of their mother, Margaret Vance. Robert was obviously very taken with his mother's Vance background, because as a result of William's research in 1854, Robert not only erected a magnificent tombstone for his Vance grandfather, he also legally changed his name to Balberny Vance, hyphenated, and filed and received approval for a new coat of arms for Vance, where he marshaled the old, the old coat of arms for the Balberny family with a coat of arms from the seal of the Reverend John Vance, with a few variations of his own. This is probably the last coat of arms that we know of that was registered for a Vance family. So, from the very first Vance-related coat of arms, about 1100 A.D., all the way up to 1854, we have some two dozen or more variations on coats of arms that in one way or another are related to the Vance last name. What is shown in this picture really just scratches the surface of all the variations that have appeared in older records around Europe. Hopefully you've seen some here that you recognize from your own research, and probably a few new ones as well. So where to go for more information? Most of these coats of arms have been published before in the VFA newsletters, so of course you can start there for many additional details. Or we also have a detailed review of all these coats of arms on the Vance History Online blog at vancehistoryonline.blogspot.com if you first click on what's this coat of arms at the top, and then click on what is the Vance coat of arms. And finally, an in-depth look at Vance heraldry. That final link will bring up 22 pages about all these coats of arms, complete with footnotes and original sources. The last Vance coat of arms I will leave you with is one that I'm sure is familiar to many of you. It's the VFA's version drawn by member Betty Silphies based on the coat of arms of the Scottish Vance family of Barnborough and the will of the Reverend John Vance of Kilmacrennan. This, of course, is available on the VFA website from the VFA for all of those with the Vance last name. On the Vance History Online website, we also show a digital version of the same coat of arms.